Right, we've probably got about ten minutes um, uh, 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 left of this, and um, we're doing something a bit different. It's a bank holiday Monday, something slightly different, a little bit slower pace than usual. Don't call in until I ask you to call in. Um, we're having three hours and one caller per hour, and um, Catherine is deciding who comes on, and she's picked an absolute doozy in the first hour uh, with Reese. Now, um, oh, my mind's just gone pl- completely blank, Reese. I was going to—I had a really pertinent. Qu- oh, no, I know what it was. Um, your family, what did your family think when you said, um, I don't know, mum, dad, whoever, you know, your, your responsible adults were, I want to be an actor? Um, my dad still says to this day, he's living vicariously through me. Um, wow. You couldn't, you couldn't ask for a more supportive pair of parents. Really? They've come and see me, they've come and see me in everything I've done. Um, I've had my grandparents come all the way from Wales to come and see me do shows. Beautiful. Um, they... They love it. They they met themselves doing Amdram years ago. Um, my dad now sells wine around the world, and my mum's a nurse. Um, Say that again. Your met... dad did what around the world? He sells wine. Sells wine around. Does the world. he really? Yeah. Um, wow. But they but they were they did uh, the old amateur dramatics. Yeah, they met doing Amdram. What do you um, know? What play it was they were doing? They were doing some sort of panto <laughs> uh, when they first met at the uh, the, the London Welsh. Uh, uh, hall somewhere in uh, Ryslip. The London Welsh Hall. London, <laughs> London what, no, what is the Royal? Oh, I can't remember now. Okay. Um, but yeah, and my dad was in a band. Is in a band called the Monty. Um, oh, the they Monty. Were called, yeah, they were originally called the Full Monty. Then the film came out. Oh. And they were people calling up, <laughs> saying, you take your clothes off. <laughs> um, so they just they changed it to the Monty. Well, did the, okay, yeah. was there any moment? When your dad considered taking his clothes off, oh, he's he's done it probably more than me on oh, a night out. Flipping it! Um, I am I am renowned for taking my clothes off. Oh, no, uh, really? I did it. Yeah, I did it at my friend's wedding last year. Sang oh. a beautiful song at their wedding. Two hours later, clothes off. Well, well, that's these 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 things happen, race. These things happen. Um, <laughs> so your mum and dad. Um, they were all for it, and they've never done the, um... I think it's a bit of a cliché, the parents... Well, well you, you'll never make a living out of that. Because my mum was, um, incredibly supportive when I said I wanted to be an actor. You know, and, and for the, the few... I talked about when I left college, I was signing on and getting housing benefit. I was. But she was also, you know, dipping into her bank account and, and keeping me going. And not once did she say... Um, I, I think you need to reconsider this and, and, and you know, because I didn't get a, 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 a paid job, well, a decent job until I left when I was 22, 23, and the 11 o'clock show, four, of, well, no, maybe th- four years, three or four years. So it was three or four years of being skint and borrowing money off her. And she never once said, I think you should um, rethink this and have a look at something else. I think it's when they know that you're passionate about something. They're like, okay, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll help you. My parents have been fantastic. You know, I turned 30 in January, you know, and there've been times in the last few years where they've just had, you know, I've been in a real pickle. Mm. Um, and I, I gave it up for a year to sell blenders, oh. um, you know, to get some stability back. And then I suddenly realized, hold on, this isn't what I want to do. Yeah. Um, and I went back to doing musicals and stuff. And a lot of the stuff I've done has been, you know, off West End and fringe stuff. Um, mm. But I'm, I'm, I couldn't be happier right now in what I'm doing. You know, I'm just, I'm, just, you know, creating things from the beginning rather than going on onto a West End stage and being told where to stand mm. and being told to do what other people have been doing over the last, you know, thirty years. Mm. Um, you know, I, I still crave to be in big, you know, West End shows, but I like creating stuff from scratch now, which is much more gratifying for me personally. What's the, um, what's, what's the dream, Reese? Um, just like I just said, then just to keep being happy like it used to be like oh, i want to be in les mis or you know i want to be in wicked and you know those shows are incredible but now i've got to a point in my life where i'm like i don't have a dream i just want to be happy every day and at the moment that's what that's what life is giving me i'm in a very lucky position at the moment with friends family and this job and opportunities i'm being given um i'm just happy to be challenged i know that i've got work all year um, all different types of work. I've got Panto again in the West End this year. Um, I'm very happy. How do you find Panto? Because um, I I love taking the boys to it, and and, 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 and we enjoy it. But but by the end, <laughs> by we went and saw two this last Christmas. Jeez, by the end of the show, 
Mm-hmm. I've kind of had enough of the shouting out. I've, I've had enough of it. You know, they, they last about two and a half hours long, and yeah. but by by the, the last 10, 15 minutes, I'm looking at my watch thinking, oh, for Christ's sake, please, can we just hurry up? Um, I, I, and then I think, God, sometimes, you know, the, the people that are in it have to do it two times a day, you know, yeah. six, seven times a week for months. <laughs> um, it must drive you absolutely insane. Um, again, I... I love it. Like, I played um, Flesh Creep, which is the baddie in Jack and the Beanstalk, uh, a couple of years ago. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Surely the baddie in Jack and the Beanstalk is the giant, or the ogre at the top of the beanstalk. Yeah, so he's the main baddie, unless you're in a massive big budget production. There's a big, like, puppet, but Flesh Creep is kind of like his henchman. Okay. um, Okay. That that kidnaps kidnaps Jill and takes her up the beanstalk. Oh, pardon. Um, Uh, Well, look look, look at you. So you... uh, 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 because the Jack, I saw Jack and the Beanstalk this year, and it mm. it wasn't it wasn't the the, they, the the story was different. It was, what do you mean? Well, because in in the, in the actual Jack and the Beanstalk, a Jack isn't going out with Jill, and B Jill doesn't get his girlfriend doesn't get taken up the Beanstalk. Ooh, our missus. <laughs> he goes up and he steals he steals two things before he steals the chicken, the golden goose. Yeah, but that doesn't happen in the pantomime. No, so in the pantomime, you know, she, he's in love with Jill, who's probably some sort of princess. Um, he's trying to impress the princess, so he goes up and tries to... No, yeah, he, she gets kidnapped. Oh. So he has to go up and save her, and whilst they're up there, they're like, oh, we can solve all the problems. Yeah. But I had to, funnily enough, my song in that year was uh, The Time Warp from Rocky oh. Horror. Oh, there you go, you see. Um, but the last two years, which is probably what you wouldn't have taken your children to, I've been in uh, London's number one adult pantomime at the Leicester Square Theatre, um, playing Dick in Dick, which is... Uh, how did you get that pantomime. part? Don't answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Which has been fantastic, um... Which is so different. And how, well, how, different. how, how, how but bear in mind, you know, the, the, we're on the radio. How adult yeah. is it? Uh, it's pretty adult. It's, it's pretty, there were lots of, uh, you know, sex toys involved. Like, you know, it's, 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 it's not gratuitous, you know, everyone keeps their clothes on, but it's just the, oh. the script and, you know, it's the story of Dick Whittington, but I'm called Dick. I've got a massive big cod piece. We've got oh, Alice Fitzgerald. Again, it's the second time you've done that, and I've, exactly. <laughs> I've winced both times. Where's he going? Oh, cod piece. Okay. <laughs> Um, Alice fits nicely, uh, was my love interest. There we go. Um, who else was there? Uh, Queen Runt. Yes. Uh, Fairy Bellend. <laughs> and on that note, um, I, the, the reason why I like doing this show and why I liked doing TV was, um, mm. y- you did it. What, I do tonight's show. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And that's it. Tomorrow will be completely different. Mm. I, 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 the, the thing that, that really worried me that if, if I were to ever get a job in the West End, which is what I was auditioning for, you know, or plays when I left college, mm. was the repetition was doing the same thing over and over for three months, six months, a mm. year. But you, 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 you're all right with that. You've got your head around that. Yeah, love it. Again, like, there's, to be honest, there's nothing really else I'm any good at. So, mm. you know, I've, I've found something that I'm good at. I best stick it to it, otherwise uh, it'll all fall apart. Well. Um, and I, I love auditions, you know. No, really? Yeah, to me, they're just free singing lessons or free wow. acting lessons. Um yeah, I love it. That's an unusual. That's an unusual attitude and a bombshell to throw in the last two minutes that we've got together. <laughs> I hate auditions, and I've, I've still go for them occasionally. Um, mm. You know, for like ads and stuff. And oh, oh, it's awful. Tell you if it's you know you're doing it down a video camera for for ads and TV. I imagine it's slightly different for th- but it's a video camera, and it's just one person saying, "Right, if you can just oh, I, I find them terrifying." Yeah, t- TV ones and ad ones are horrible. Because you're normally getting made to do stupid things yes. over and over again. Yes. But the, 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 the ones and musicals are a little bit... Um, it's, it's loads of you singing in a room with numbers stuck on your chest, is it? Yeah. And you just get to sing. Like, I love singing. I absolutely love singing. So any chance I've got to sing, I'll just sing. Yeah. And if it's in front of people who you're, you know, trying to impress, all the better. And if you... If you I've had some terrible auditions in my time. Um, terrible. You just sing completely out of key. You forget the words. Yeah. But you just leave the room and go, well... I've messed up. Wow. God, do you know what? I'm really glad about Ian. I've not had you send me that I've had a yellow card. No, 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 yellow card. No, not yet. No, no, not yet. There's I've still, still a minute. Very close. Um, very listen, close a couple of times. we've got, we only got a minute left. Um, get the, get the plug in for the, um, the, the, the show that's on at the moment. Give, give us the name and tell us where we can go and get tickets and stuff. 
Okay, um, you just need to Google Alice's Adventures Underground. It's at the vaults at London Waterloo. We're still in our paid previews from tomorrow, um, and we're on until the end of September 2017. Um, come and join us in Wonderland. Um, I, I will hopefully see you there at some point, Reese. Uh, and listen, keep yeah. in touch and let us know if uh, your friends in New York are interested in doing something yes, with us. That would I be will. awesome. Um, and thank you so much for the last uh, hour or so. I've really enjoyed it. Well, you know, listen to all your podcasts and couldn't have dreamed for a better first-time call. Nice one, man. Thank you, Reese. Take care, mate. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye. What a nice gentleman. Um, I enjoyed that a lot. Um, we're going to have a little break. Don't call in for a bit. Don't call in for a bit. After the, the news at 11, I'll ask you to call in and I'll just set out the stall once again and, and, and remind you of the rules and hopefully we'll get someone completely different. Late Nights with Ian Lee on Talk Radio. We'll get you talking. Bruce, I'm just going to ask the question, and you can tell me to jog on. What okay. happened with your parents? Oh, yeah, that's, that's absolutely fine. Who's going to ask me if my name is actually Bruce? No, no, no. Why, did you, right, why did you fall out with your parents? Um, very long time coming, I think, is the easiest way of saying it. But I had a very weird relationship with my parents. So when I was obviously growing up, I think my dad was... I think it was down to how they were both brought up, if I'm honest. Yeah. But that could just be given an excuse, I don't know. Um, but they were very old-fashioned in the way they did things. And my dad in particular would be one of these people that would do everything for other people. So if somebody had a problem with their guttering, he'd be like, oh, it's okay, I'll come around the weekend. Right. Now, my dad worked a full-time job. He wasn't a handyman, but... That's what he would do. So yeah. the weekends, I wouldn't see him. Or if I did see him, it would be to do things around the house. So yeah. he would never get anyone in to do building work, anything like that. He'd all be done himself. Yeah. Um, what that did to me was it meant that, you know, if I wanted to go to the park, if I wanted to go and ride a bike or learn to ride a bike, um, you know, the first person I would ask would be my dad. Mm. And there would always be excuses for not why uh, he could do that. Um, so I think over time I just kind of resented things, but as I got older, we just, we were different people, completely different people. Like I did not see the world in the same way that they saw the world. And as I kind of got older and got a bit of confidence in myself, I wanted to do different things. Mm. I was never unruly. I never, uh, I never did drugs. Um, I never went out drinking, um, and staying out all night without letting anyone know where I was. I was always quite, um, I still good in that respect, but they always kind of made me feel, uh, I suppose a bit, a bit uh, belittling to me, actually, how they made me feel. Now, I've got a brother as well. My brother's five years younger, and we are completely different people. He's uh, a genius, but he's got no common sense. I've got common sense. I'm not hmm. much of a genius. Yeah. Um, and there was a five-year gap, so there were times when, you know, I was, you know, when I was 15, he was 10, and I just wanted to start going out and doing things with friends. He wanted to sit at home, and, you know, as we got older, that kind of uh, relationship drifted apart a bit as well. But one of the key things in this story is that we, oh, sorry, I, I knew myself that I was getting told things about my brother that was then making me resent him. In, think, in how he was behaving to my parents. Right. So, my brother went off to university. Uh, this was a good one. He didn't speak to them, or he didn't return the calls for a while, and so they got me to contact him on their behalf. Oh, blimey. And what they did, of course, was that then got him to resent me because yeah. he basically, he was sick of them and he wanted his space yeah. and felt that they were smothering him even though he was down in Bristol and we lived near London. Yeah. Um, and so that further put a wedge between us. Now, fast forward a few years to whereabouts this argument happened. My brother's getting married. We get. I used to speak to my parents every day, especially my dad. And every day it'd be, oh, you'll never guess what your brother's done. Or you'll never guess what your sister-in-law's done. And it'd be all these things that would just make me feel anger towards them. Um, so, 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 your, so your brother or your your parents were telling you your brother or your future sister in law or, or sister in law were were um, doing stupid stuff, and th th what that got you angry that they were being stupid and selfish, uh, 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 upsetting my parents. Right. Yeah. 
Now, for whatever reason, I always did this thing that although I kind of resented them, I always defended them as well. I had that kind of protective element. So mm. if I'm hearing that my brother's upsetting them or my sister in law's upsetting them, I'm defending them. And I'm like, well, this, you know, I don't really want to get involved, but, you know, I can't believe he's doing this. I don't want to get involved, but here's my, here's my view on it. Yes. I, uh... but, 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 but the thing is, I wouldn't talk to him about it. That's the thing. Yeah. So all this stuff would kind of be building up. So fast forward to the day my daughter's born. Um, we didn't know she was being born that day. We knew that we was going to be taken in to be induced that day. And my parents were halfway up the country visiting friends. Um, she was born in an emergency C-section. Everything was luckily fine in the end. Um, and I was really excited for my parents to come back and meet our daughter when we got out of hospital. Um, two days later, we get out of hospital. Um, my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law, who I, uh, I, I really get on well with my mother-in-law, uh, unusually, um, but they had uh, driven us home because my wife obviously couldn't drive and I didn't drive. Um, and we had a dog. And obviously he knew that something was ca- was happening oh, but didn't boy. know what exactly. So when we come back, he's obviously <laughs> me, yeah. very excited, wants to know what's going on. So <laughs> my mother-in-law and sister-in-law were literally <clears throat> there to help us get the house ready, calm yeah. the dog down. My parents drove up, saw my sister-in-law's car, turned around and went home. Wow. Gosh, now, that's a statement, up. isn't it? Yeah. Now, I phoned up to wonder where yeah. they are because I was expecting them. And my mum said to me, well, we've gone home. I said, well, what do you mean you've gone home? Wow. Well, your mother, like, Shelley's there. That's my mother-in-law. Um, we're not seeing the baby when she's there. And I was like, what, what do you mean? And she's like, I don't want to there spoiling it for me, telling me what's happened. I want to hear it from you. So we're going home. <clears throat> and I was in floods of tears. Yeah, because but... I couldn't work out why they wouldn't want to meet their granddaughter. Now, that's that's an inc- that's uh, uh, I'm struggling to understand that attitude. That's yeah. incredible. Now my I, now my mother in law, and I said like she's a really nice person. So I, again, it's not like there was any kind of hatred that I knew there. Um, she got on the phone and said, "Look, please, we'll go home. Just come and see the baby. No, it's been spoiled. Now we don't want to come. We'll come back tomorrow." So um, we had. Lots of rowing over the phone that evening. Um, they came round the next day. We tried to just put bygones be bygones, but um, we just couldn't let it go. Um, and we was kind of stewing for a few weeks. Uh, my birthday happened. My brother got married. We were there for that. My mum then started telling people that uh, my wife was crazy because she wouldn't let anyone hold the baby at the wedding. It was six weeks old, which um, actually wasn't true because my aunts and uncles and they all had time with the baby even even if even if it were true it it, it's completely understandable that a new mum or new parents don't want anyone to hold that's that's uh, understandable and that's acceptable Mm. if a new parent doesn't want to pass their baby around that's fine that's their decision that's not crazy she wasn't she wasn't a hot potato but (laughs) um but anyway and so um they went away for a couple of weeks i uh, we had another row i spoke to my brother um, he come around with his sister-in-law. We then talked about things that we've heard. It then turned out that whilst my parents were bad mouthing my brother to me, they were bad mouthing me to my Here brother. We go, yeah. And you know, all of a sudden, it's like, well, hang on a second. So you, we don't get on that well because of this, and you don't like us because of that. And of course, uh, we resolved that. So now, me and my brother are extremely close. Um, wow. We got home. <laughs> uh, so my parents got back from the holiday. We were when there. Sorry, I'm getting tongue-tied now. No, go on. This um, is, uh, this, I we can understand round, why. <laughs> we went round to see them um, without the baby. Uh, we just wanted to see them as adults and try and get all this sorted out. Um, a lot of stuff, a lot of years of anger came out from both sides. Yeah. Um, my it, it, the, Basically, the evening ended when my, <laughs> my mum pulled out a uh, chicken fillet oh. from her bra. Oh. Because she'd had a uh, an operation where she had to lose a, a breast, yeah, hit my wife in the face with it. Wowzers! <clears throat> uh, so we said we're not having this anymore. That's it. We're done. Why did she and... choose the chicken fillet? Was that? I mean, that's <laughs> that's an unusual choice of weapon. Was she what making a point was... about the operation or? Yeah, kind of. So what happened was my wife got was was really upset having the emergency C section because right. she felt that she had kind of failed our daughter. And my mother basically turned around to and said, grow up, stop being stupid. It was only an operation. Right, right. Um, and wow. that, that's what kind of led to that. Oh, man. Um, 
my mum then turned around and said, you should be lucky I didn't have a knife in my hand. Jeez. So we left never to see them again. Um, I spoke to, I got a phone call and some letters around Christmas about trying to meet up with her to try and sort things out. I didn't want to, but I did. I met up with her in a pub. Yeah, well done. I spoke to my brother and said, do you know what this is about? And he said, no, I don't think she wants to resolve anything. I said, okay. And uh, what she just wanted to make sure was that I was going to pay her um, the money that we borrowed about three, four years oh, before we moved man. out. Now, yeah. at this point as well, I've been paying this back for years, never not paying it, direct debit, hadn't stopped it even when we stopped talking. So there was no reason for her to do that. She just wanted to make a point. So um, once I realised that's all she wanted out of me, I went home, got a loan, put myself in debt, which I didn't really want to do, but I did, paid just to off. pay them off and said, yeah. see you later. Uh, and that was it. And every now and again, I might get the odd snarky email from them. Um, but that's that's really it. But How long ago was that? How long ago was that last time you was, saw her? Uh, so that was Christmas 2013. Oh, man, alive. That's... And I mean, it's got to the point where... So the other thing as well is uh, what's kind of come out is there was a lot of members of my family, like my aunts and uncles, that I lost touch with. And the reason why was because they had also had similar rows, not including being hit in the face with chicken fillets, um, but with my mum. And there's this common denominator, whenever I talk to these people, that she would do these things. And I'd always heard her sto- side of the story. Yeah, things, of course. Never the whole picture. Yeah. So now I've done all this work, and luckily... I've now kind of rekindled a lot of those bridges with my family. So, well, that's good I, that you've you've, you've you've made peace with your brother and peace yeah. with other bits of your family. Listen, I don't want to psychoanalyze your mum on the show in five minutes, but she said she doesn't sound well. That's not that's not well no. behaved. I mean, you know, mentally unwell behaviour. Yeah, she she is uh, crazy about being diagnosed crazy, and um, that's that's probably the well, easiest way of putting it. I, d- I don't <laughs> think they diagnose people. I'm going to mark you down as crazy, um, <laughs> you know, but I get your point. Yeah, clinically <laughs> insane, but um, but yeah, and she has this habit of um, warping situations to uh, make her look better. <clears throat> um, what was interesting though, when this all happened, is I turned around to anyone, any friends, any family, and said, look, this is a situation that's happened. This is our side of things. You can hear their side of things. If you want to talk to them, we've got no problem with that at all because we're adults here. We're not going to make people choose. Um, She actually asked uh, people not to speak to us ever again. And some people did that and have never returned a call, never returned an email or anything like that. Yeah. Um, most of the people that are quite open and know what my mum's like are still talking to us. So, um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a funny a funny few years, but I don't feel bad for it because in myself, I feel a much stronger person. I feel that I was um, I wasn't true to myself and I definitely wasn't true to my wife in the things that I was doing because I was always thinking about my parents and how things would affect them. Mm. So um, that that was it. So, yeah, I don't, I don't feel any hatred or resentment there. It's a shame it took as long as it did, but I don't feel bad the situation happened. Bruce, we've got two minutes. I've got one more question for you. What, what's the next film you're going to go and see? <laughs> well, I saw Fast and Furious 8 the other day. I've never that seen a Fast and Furious film. I've never seen one. I, 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 I just, it's just them driving, isn't it? No. Oh. Don't watch the first four. Start oh. at five. That's when the rock comes in. Start that's when they get good. Fast and Furious five. Okay. That's it. Fast five onwards. Um, if we've got two minutes, um, I'm sorry that I might have brought the tone down after the first excellent caller. No, no, mate. It was great, by no, the way. No one's you um, brought the tone down at all. But if anyone does want to uh, hear me talk any more, yeah. I do have a Disney podcast called Dis After Dark. Hang on, so say that. Say that again. People. Uh, a Disney podcast, yeah. which is called Diz After Dark. Diz After Dark. And it's an adult Disney oh. podcast. Uh-oh. So Uh-oh. we drink beer. We don't swear too often, but it's aimed more at adults that are into Disney. And if, they, if people put in Diz After Dark in iTunes or where they normally get their podcasts, it'll pop up, will it? It will indeed. And some of the people I did a podcast with are listening at this moment, I know. Okay. So if I didn't mention no. that, then they well would kill me. But you, so the ne- but the next p- film you're going to go and see is Fast and Furious 8. No, no. Uh, the next film I'm going to go and see <laughs> is probably Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. 
Oh, look, in the last 20 seconds, you've said something controversial. I couldn't get, I couldn't sit through the first one. I thought it was awful. Oh, Ian. I, honestly, I gave it half an hour. I thought, nah, life's too short for this. Bruce, <laughs> let, we, let's not fall out. I've really enjoyed uh, your company for the last hour, mate. Thank you so much. Thank and it's you, good Ian. to hear your voice again. Thank you. Cheers, my dears. Ta-ta. Um, I enjoyed that. What's that buzz? Is it me buzzing? Well, something's buzzing. We'll find out what's buzzing. Um, now will be a good time to call. Oh, three, I thought it was him that was buzzing. 0344 499 1000. We need one more caller for the last hour of the show. Late Nights with Ian Lee on Talk Radio. We have ways of making you talk. Um, I think we've got Sam back. Are you there, Sam? Yeah, thank Th- you. That's better. That's better. Um, I- I've got to ask a question. And again, it's just, it's the same rules apply. If I ask anything that's too personal, then, um, then don't. Um... How do you tell a four-year-old that the, the the baby he was expecting to come back isn't coming back? I mean, the, 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 I had a, a friend on the NCT class. We had a friend who um, uh, lost a baby stillbirth. And um, it was a real eye-opener for me talking to her about it. She was very open about it. Um, yeah. Because um, I hadn't really thought about it before. And um, I, I realise I'm wading in with my big ten size 10 hobnail boots on here. Um, and it's, it is... It is, it's losing a baby. It's, it's, it's a baby that has passed away. And, um, I've it's, just realised you probably won't want to talk about this. And I feel a little oh, bit no, clum. No, no. Are you I, sure? I, I feel a bit clumsy about the way I've just waded no, into that. No, no. People always feel like that. And okay. I'm very aware that it's a difficult thing to talk about. So it doesn't make me feel uncomfortable. Okay. I love talking about it because I suppose for me, if I didn't talk about it, it would be like Mila was forgotten. My little well, I was girl, about to say, what was her name? Mila. 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 M I L A. I've not heard that name before. Where's that from? Um. Oh gosh, there's an actress, isn't there? Mila something. I've, I've never heard that name. That's a great name. <laughs> it's pretty, isn't it? Yeah. We would say one night, and I liked Mia, but it was too common, so we said, "Oh, add some into it." So she oh, are you Mila. saying are you saying Mila with an M for mother or Mila? Yeah. And some other. Oh, I miss it. Okay, Mila. Okay, no, all right. okay, okay, okay. okay. Well, it's, uh, <laughs> yes, I fair. Yes, okay, all right. Um, yeah, it's a good name. It's tough coming up with names for kids, isn't it? Oh, it's so difficult. It really is. So, did you have the books? Yes, we had the books. Yeah, th- like a thousand and one baby name, girl names, yeah. and a thousand and one boy. <laughs> what is yeah. that about? But I just, I don't like names that are too common. I like them being unique. And not ridiculous new, unique, not like no. Pocahontas and silly things like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but names that there's not going to be loads of them. Yeah. Know? That's what I It's that thing with. of getting that balance of, you're right, you want a name that's going to be pretty individual, but, um, that, but that's not, you know, going to sound stupid. And also yeah. you have to abbreviate it. What does it rhyme like? Yeah. What, what, what does it rhyme with? What does it, if you put it with your surname, what, and you have to... What uh, initials are you going to have? Yeah, Thanks. you have to work out all of the, the, the insults that might come up and go, well, this is probably, a, you know, this is probably as good as it's going to get. Um, yeah. So okay. how did you, t- well, well, can I ask why, well, the, so it, it was, it was a stillbirth. Yes. Well, do you want me to explain what happened? Yeah, it, it, I would actually, yeah. Well, um, it was my second child, a little girl. And it was completely, a, a, a completely, well, just brilliant pregnancy. There was nothing wrong. Um, we were monitored just the appropriate number of times, no, no concerns, nothing like that. Then one day, it was, I was approaching my due date, and one morning I actually dreamt that I was bleeding. And I woke up and I was. I, oh. I know that sounds mad. No, it doesn't at all. No, that's I a, did. Yeah. And when I told the midwives that, they were like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, that's, you know, that is crazy. But it did happen. Mm. And they rushed me in. Um, and they scanned. They couldn't find a heartbeat. They scanned my stomach. And they said that you know, she passed away. And basically, I had had a grade four placental abruption. So the placenta had come away from the womb too soon so she was deprived of oxygen there was nothing wrong with her at all she was just deprived of oxygen so then i had to they had to induce labor i had to give birth you had to give birth yeah um which was quite harrowing i mean my mum and my husband were with me um and people were in and out it was very quiet everyone was very respectful and it was very quiet and she was born and she was just like a little doll oh sam she was stunning Oh, so, dear. It, 
Yeah, it was, and, and I suppose the difficulty with losing a child at full term is that you've then got to think of funeral preparations, and so it doesn't end there, you know. It, it's very, very difficult. But did you did you hold her? Yes. Yeah. We we kept her for about six hours. Oh, Sam. So she was absolutely stunning. I, I thought my world was over. I did. I honestly thought that everything in my life wouldn't matter ever again. So people who have lost children and maybe they don't go on to have other children, I can't imagine how they live their lives because my other daughters that came along, they really made me, well, they, they've just given me mm. purpose now. One of the lines, and I, 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 I don't think I've ever been guilty of saying this, but one of the lines that's often trotted out when it is a baby that has been lost during a pregnancy or a stillbirth is, well, you can always have another one. <laughs> and it was talking to this friend that we made in the NCT class... The, I, I mean, I'd always realised it was a bit of a crass line, but it, it really hit home just how insensitive that is. You know, it would be like if one of my boys passed away now. Well, you could always have another one. That is your child. That was, she was your first daughter, you know. And yeah. um, I think people struggle to understand that because you've not had them... People struggle to understand that when, when there is a preg- you know, when there is a pregnant person in the, in the marriage... That baby's in the house with you. You know, you're talking to it. The dads are talking to it. You know, the the mums are talking. It's there. It's a baby. And she was, you know, I gave birth to her naturally like I did with my other children. And, you know, she was part of us and she always will be. And I did get the insensitive comments, you know, three weeks later I had people saying to me, you feeling better now? (laughs) And I'd look at them and think, no, I'm not feeling better now. And I had people saying it was the same as a miscarriage, which, not that I'm putting down miscarriages no. because it's all horrendous, I, you know. But what I'm saying is, I suppose for me, you know, I was, I was out there pregnant. She was, she was £6.12 and oh. perfect. So, you know, I did have the comments, but 11 months later, like I said, I had my, my daughter, Aviana, and... I just, oh, you can't imagine. My my husband actually screamed when she was born, like a, a relief <laughs> scream. Yeah, I bet. I bet it must have been a very tense pregnancy. Oh, it was horrendous. Everyone holding their breath. Oh, we were. And I would just constantly say to my mum, you know, oh, mum, I, I think she's, she, she's dead. Oh, I, I would bet. actually I say bet. those words, you yeah. know, and my mum would say, stop it now, stop it, you know. So, yeah, it was. I remember I used to wake myself up every hour to go and I would literally make sure that I wasn't losing. I would give her a little nudge. God love her. Yeah, wake up, <laughs> wake up, come on. <laughs> I would, I would. Good. I would wake her up and that would be like my checklist every hour throughout the night. I, I was on pins. So they induced me early because if it were to happen again, it would happen at the same time. Right. So by bringing her on early, I mean, the staff were just, Amazing. How much early? How 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 m- much before the due date? Uh, she was born at thirty-five weeks. Okay. So they brought her on five weeks early. Right. Wow. And um, she was fine. She didn't need to go to special care. She she did have a funny little breathing episode for a few minutes, mm. and my heart stopped. Mm. But she was absolutely fine. We went back to the ward, and and she was just oh my god, she was just my world. I can't even explain to you how amazing that feeling is mm. after the loss. You oh, know? oh yeah, yeah. So, for me, even though she has got autism, I think, for me, I just hold on to any... You know, it doesn't matter what we have to go through. My husband and I just... We live for our kids because of what... I know everyone does, but, you know, I think because of what we've been through, I don't know, it just gives you a different outlook. I I think it does. So... Um... Thank you for sharing that, Sam. That's, I mean, I think that's... Uh, you, you, uh, I'm amazed by everyone sharing it's, it's, it's such, such intimate stuff, and I think that, that, that's, um, that's very kind of you to share, um, uh, to, to share all that stuff with us. I, re- I really appreciate it. Um, I think, for me, I like to be able to share my story because there's a lot of people out there who have gone through the same thing mm. and they feel like they can't talk, they feel like... You know, there's a bit of taboo about it, you know, and people expect you to get over it very quickly, mm. and maybe you're not, maybe you... You know, lots of different reasons, and I think that if more people kind of said, I'm, I've been through it, and even though I'll always hurt, I've found a way to live, I have. And, you know, it's just good for awareness. It, mm. it is good. Thank you for that. Um